Pepper roti is definitely one of my favorite type of rotis. Whether you like it flaky or more bake-like, this video is suited for everyone. Today, I'm going to show you two different ways to make everyone's favorite pepper roti. Here I have three cups of flour and to it, I'm just going to add three teaspoons of baking powder. Give that a good mix until everything is well incorporated. Then, start gradually adding your water. Your water should be lukewarm. Start bringing the dough together by squeezing it just like this and continue gradually adding your water until there's no more dry flour left. So you see how I'm intentionally pouring the water where there's dry flour? That's exactly what you want to keep doing. Notice I'm still just squeezing the dough. When the dough comes together, I usually wash my hands and come back with clean hands to make it easier to handle. Then I start to knead the dough for about a minute. If at any point your dough feels too dry, just wet your hands and continue kneading. When you're done, Rub some ghee all over your dough. The ghee is what's going to make your roti really soft. When you're done, immediately cover with a damp paper towel so that it doesn't dry out and rest for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes of resting, your dough is relaxed, so go ahead and separate it into four equal parts or as equal as you can get them. When you've got your four pieces, take them one by one and flatten them in the palm of your hand just like this and then tuck in the ends as I'm doing here. And don't just roll your pieces in the palm of your hands guys, otherwise they won't come out as soft and flaky. Trust the process. When you're done, roll it in the palm of your hands just to smoothen it out a bit and then set aside until you're ready to use it. Do the same for the rest. When you've completed all, immediately cover with a damp paper towel so that they don't dry out. Let the dough rest for a further 15 minutes. So up until this point, the process for making the two types of rotis has been the same. But here's where we're gonna switch it up. I'm just gonna bring out my chowki because the next step requires it. Sprinkle some dry flour on your chowki or counter. Take two of your dough balls and roll them out one by one. It always helps to flatten out your dough first before rolling out. We're not trying to roll it too thin or too big here. I flip it often so that it doesn't stick to my chalky and I don't have to keep adding additional dry flour. After rolling out, I take my ghee and butter mixture and spread it all over the rolled out dough. I don't skimp on this at all guys because this is what makes a soft roti. So I try to get it all over the dough. I try not to miss any parts at all. When you're done, sprinkle a little dry flour at the top. Then make a cut from the center of your dough downwards and then start to roll your roti in whichever way is most comfortable to you. This is what's going to give this roti the layers the other roti wouldn't have. When you've almost completed your roll, tuck in all your ends just like this. Then you're going to flip it and tuck in the pointy end as well.
We've just created one Louis. Do the same with the other dough bowl. And we're just creating two parata Louis here guys. So if you want a better explanation of this part, I'll link my parata recipe in the cards above. So now we have two regular and two parata louis. Cover with a damp paper towel and rest for 30 to 45 minutes. In the meanwhile, let's prepare our filling. Here I have three small to medium sized potatoes cut up and boiled. And I'm just going to take my potato masher and mash it up until it's smooth. When you're done, add a pinch of salt, some jeera or cumin powder, grated carrots, and I grated this on the small side of the grater, and a dry seasoning blend that consists of shadowbenny or culantro leaves, hot pepper, pimento peppers, and garlic cloves. Give everything a good mix until it's well incorporated. Next, add some grated cheese to your mixture and mix that in well. And I also use the small side on the grater to grate the cheese. When everything's well incorporated, set aside until it's ready to use. Let's get back to our dough. After 45 minutes of resting, it's now time to assemble our rotis. Sprinkle some dry flour on your work surface to start rolling out your loaves. I'm gonna do the regular roti first and then the parata. As usual, I'm just flattening it out with my fingers first before I start rolling it out. Once it starts off as a circle, it's easier to get it to roll out as a circle. You wanna roll this out thin but not too thin otherwise your stuffing will boost through your roti. Also keep in mind the size of your tower or griddle or whatever you're using to cook the roti on. My tower is only 12 inches in diameter so it's on the smaller side. When you're done, roll out the other regular loi. Take some of your filling and spread it on one of your rolled out loi's. You don't want to skimp on your filling, but you also don't want to overfill your roti. So I'm just using the back of my spoon to help me spread the filling. You want to leave about an inch free around the edges. And look how gorgeous this looks already guys. When you're done, sprinkle some grated cheese on top of that. Next. Take your other rolled out loi and lay it over this one. They should be around the same size so it shouldn't be difficult to line up the edges. You then have to seal where the two rotis meet so I use a fork to help me do this. I go all around the roti pressing down with the fork to help seal it. I then reinforce that seal by going around squeezing down the edges with my finger. When you're done, transfer to your tower. Your tower should already be hot and your stove on a low heat. Here I'm just using some paper towel to help me oil the tower so that the roti doesn't stick. Next, carefully place your roti on your tower. You have a few seconds here to fit the roti into place. When you've positioned your roti, spread some oil to the top and allow the roti to cook on one side for 4-5 to five minutes, checking occasionally making sure that it's not burning. Uh -huh. 
After four to five minutes, flip your roti and allow the other side to cook. I'm using a dabbler to help me out today. But if you don't have one, no worries, you can also use a wooden spatula or whatever you have on hand. Go ahead and oil this side as well and cook for an additional 4 to 5 minutes. And I'm just using a paper towel to help me spread the oil. Nothing fancy. Hey, I'm just using my dabbler to make sure the ends remain sealed. After about 9 minutes total, my roti is finally ready. With the help of two dabblers, I'm now going to remove the roti from the tower. And boy does this look good. Let's move on to roti number 2. Prep your tower by oiling it again. For this one, we're switching it up a bit and we're assembling our roti on the tower itself. So it's the same process as the last one, except this time we're assembling it on the tower. Just a reminder, the roti has to be cooked on a low flame otherwise it will burn. My stove is actually on the lowest possible temperature right now. Don't forget your cheese! I decided to show it this way as well because the first few times I attempted to make pepper roti, I assembled the rotis on my counter and then I attempted to transfer it to the tower and it was always a bit difficult for me. But practice definitely makes perfect. Even when it's assembled on the tower, you still need to seal the ends guys, so don't forget this part. I'm not sure if you can notice, but I'm definitely seeing a clear difference in how this roti and the other one looks. This one was made using the Parata Louis and it's actually my personal favorite because it tends to be a bit softer. After assembling the roti, oil the top just as you did with the last one. When the first side is cooked, go ahead and flip your roti. Oil this side as well and allow to cook for 4-5 to five minutes, checking occasionally. Always ensure that your ends remain sealed. When your roti is done, Remove from the tower and cut immediately. So this is how our Parata pepperoni came out and it's absolutely gorgeous. Let's cut it up to see the inside and then we'll check out the other roti. You could cut this however you want. Some people do squares, some people do triangles like some pizza slices. It's really up to your personal preference. I'm really just winging it here. Guys, these look so good. Let's check out the inside. Are you all seeing that cheese pull? Oh my gosh. And you can still see the steam coming out of the roti. And look at these flakes, guys. I am going wild right now. <laughs> I love to see layers on a roti. It makes it so much better. And look at this inside. Yum. Let's check out the other roti. This was roti number one and I must say it did not disappoint either. This was a roti made with the regular lois, so it won't be as flaky as the one before but it'll still be delicious. I know you're excited to see the inside of this one, so let's cut them open. I decided to cut this one a little bigger than the other one. Don't they just look gorgeous? Wow, the wait for this was definitely worth it guys. Look at this. 
Although it doesn't have the layers like the paratha roti, it's still so perfect. You really can't go wrong with either of these rotis. I really hope you enjoyed this recipe today guys. Definitely let me know if you try it and hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more. Until next time.